Time for stoking the fire, shoveling the walk, and waiting for... That's all changed now as the wonderful sport of skiing takes millions of Amerigors during the winter months. Yes, skiing has become a major sport, and it's getting bigger every year. Nowhere is this more evident than in the state of Maine, where sparkling weather, bountiful snows, and matchless scenery bring thousands of skiers to our slope. Skiing is believing, so let's visit the snow country. Let's go skiing through Maine. The main turnpike gets us headed for ski country in a hurry. And although snow lies deep in the mountains, our road is bare and dry. Main highway crews are as efficient as you will find anywhere. And snow is plowed from the roadway almost as soon as it lands. The speed limit on this turnpike is 70 miles an hour. And traffic clogged city streets are far behind. Our departure point from the main turnpike is exit 8. Up route 302, which leads us through the beautiful Sebago Lake region to the little town of Bridgeton, all in less than an hour's driving time. Five miles beyond Bridgeton comes the first stop in our tour of Maine ski country, Pleasant Mountain. As our car pulls into the parking area, there comes an overpowering urge to don skis and get up the mountain as quickly as possible. Almost before you can say shush, we're boarding the double chairlift for a comfortable ride to the summit of Pleasant Mountain. As our chair goes higher, a breathtaking panorama unfolds around us, and from the top, our view stretches from the White Mountains to the sea. The descent can be just as fast or just as leisurely as you want to make it. For this couple, it's the start of a beautiful day of skiing at Pleasant Mountain. Mount Abram, the second stop on our main ski trip, is in the village of Lock Mills, five miles south of Bethel on Route 26. Mount Abram boasts expert and intermediate trails, but the primary appeal here is to the skiing family. Facilities here are tailored to every member of the family from the youngster on skis for the first time to mom and dad.
This dad finds Mount Abram a good spot for Junior's first ski lesson. And Junior likes it well enough to solo. And some youngsters, too small to ride the lift, find other means of getting up the hill. A short drive beyond Bethel on Route 2, we reach the access road to Sunday River Skiway. The major part of this fast-growing area is located on Barker Mountain. Here we see a snow roller in action. Equipment like this is used at all major slopes in Maine to ensure the very finest ski conditions. These rollers go to work as soon as a few inches of new snow accumulate, packing the trails to preserve the snow cover. Further up the mountain, a white sweated instructor is about to give some pointers on skiing technique. He and one of his pupils have reached the top of the first T-bar lift and are about to catch another lift to the very summit. From the mountaintop, our view out across the beautiful Sunday River Valley is typical of the rugged scenery found in the Longfellow Mountains of Maine. But with our ski class about to start, we don't have much time to enjoy it. Our instructor points out the Cascade Trail, and the descent begins. The weather is perfect, snow conditions ideal, and the pupils eager. What better combination for an exciting day of skiing at Sunday River? Half an hour along Route 2 from Sunday River is the town of Rumford. This paper mill community is a Johnny-come-lately to the ranks of commercial ski areas, but its mountainous terrain makes it a natural. Chisholm Winter Park is just four miles from the center of town. On Black Mountain, this new area lies in a natural snow bowl, making for ideal ski conditions, and the main slope is lighted for night skiing. Rumford Ski Area, like most of those in Maine, caters to the family. There's something here for skiers of all ages, as these seven-year-old twins, Lee and Roger, are finding out. comes down with a little trouble, but Roger finds the going more difficult. No moguls here, but a case of the wobbles. He's going, 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 gone. A little fall doesn't shake this carbon copy to some fun, you bet. Rumford, for many years, has been a stronghold of Nordic competition, jumping in cross country. The annual Rumford Winter Carnival attracts some of the top jumpers and longlaufers in the nation. These exciting and colorful events draw sizable crowds for a weekend of fun and frolic. Pineland Ski Club in neighboring Andover 
shares the Nordic spotlight with Rumford. For this little town, Winter Carnival is the biggest affair of the year. It has a real homey atmosphere, and visitors find the hospitality hard to beat. Andover usually plays host to a national cross-country race. Running against the clock and over some real rugged terrain, these competitors need an abundance of strength and stamina. The grueling races cover distances of 9 to 18 miles, and top finishers find themselves prime candidates for United States Olympic teams. Jumping competition always lures big crowds. Here at Andover's Lone Mountain Jump, they gather early for an afternoon of thrills and spills. The colors flash down for traditional opening ceremonies and the big event begins. Jumpers soar from the lip of the chute, vying for top rating in style and distance. A thrilling sight for spectators below. on Lone Mountain, our view across the valley is a beautiful one, but a round, white, balloon-like object stands out from the surrounding scenery. It's the world's first ground station for communicating by satellites. 160 feet high and 210 feet in diameter, this monster is the largest inflated earthbound structure ever erected, and needless to say, has become a full-fledged tourist attraction. This huge ray dome is the first link in a worldwide communications network. Television, telephone, and telegraph signals are being transmitted by way of satellites orbiting thousands of miles out in space. At Andover, skiing and the space age go hand in hand. A short drive from the Andover Rumford area takes us up Route 17 into the Rangeley region, a fabulous winter wonderland of mountains, lakes, and forests. From our lofty perch on the height of land, the panorama below is one of breathtaking beauty. The ice-bound lake is Moose Look McGunnick, and the mountains beyond stretch all the way into Canada. Bald Mountain rises from the very shore of Moose Look McGunnick Lake at Okwasa. Here's another area which caters extensively to family groups, where skiers of all ages enjoy its well-groomed slope by day and under the lights at night. This comely lass is Kathy, a member of the Bald Mountain Ski Patrol. You'll see her very shortly at the top. The summit provides a sweeping 360-degree view of the Rangeley region. Moose Look McGuntic Lake to the left, Cupsoptic straight ahead, and Rangeley to the right. Skiing has added a fourth dimension to this scenic region, already famous for its spring fishing, summer resort activities, and hunting in the fall. Here comes Kathy, our ski patrol girl. Let's see if her style is as attractive as her appearance. Back on the lower slope, we see a new concept in babysitting. Instead of staying at home to care for the little one, this young girl takes in skiing. And here's a new twist of the age-old Boy Meets Girl story. The young lady with the fur chapeau decides to show off her skiing ability for an admirer. Yes, 
yes, there's wonderful skiing, matchless scenery, and loads of winter fun for the whole family at Bald Mountain. But it's time to move on now to the region's other major ski area, seven miles beyond the town of Rangeley. At Saddleback Mountain, a real live snow bunny catches our eye, and she'll probably catch it again. Saddleback has gained wide renown in a few short years for its rugged beauty and challenging trails. Maine's second highest ski mountain is in the heart of the snow country, and its average yearly snowfall in excess of 140 inches assures a long ski season. A steady stream of skiers makes the unloading zone a busy place. This T-bar serves the lower slopes designed primarily for the novice. Our snow bunny should be coming up shortly. Let's wait. Here she comes, all primed for a ride down the spacious five-acre wheeler slope. Here she'll find plenty of room to maneuver, and the run will take her all the way down to the lodge. From Saddleback's 3,300-foot elevation, another magnificent view rolls out beneath us. Snow-covered lakes, the deep green of endless forests, and blue-tinted mountains in the distance. More intent on skiing than viewing, this couple comes up to join a group for the final run of the day. They'll ski the Grey Ghost Trail which, like many trails here and at Bald Mountain, are named for fishing lures. The Grey Ghost is steep, fast, and challenging, but these skiers make it look easy. Running off the opposite side of Saddleback is the two and a half mile touring trail known as Hudson Highway. This route gets us down in easy stages with ample time to stop and enjoy the wonderful scenery. With us comes a ski patrolman on his final sweep to be sure that no skiers remain on the mountain when the lift shut down. And as the mountain becomes quiet at the end of an exciting day, we leave Saddleback for the last stop on our main ski trip. Our first look at Maine's biggest ski area is from Route 27, and it's impressive to say the least. Sugarloaf Mountain, 4,237 feet high, claims the only above timberline skiing in New England served by a lift. Like all the other areas we visited, Sugarloaf has a comfortable lodge with cafeteria, a ski shop where equipment is sold or rented, a ski school staffed by qualified instructors, and trained patrolmen familiar with the latest first aid techniques. Sugarloaf has more than its share of snow bunnies coming in all sizes, shapes, and colors. A major boast of main ski areas is no long waits to board the lift. There are lines, of course, but they move, and they move quickly. These skiers are running out the lower end of a trail known as Winter's Way. It's designated a novice trail, but some of these skiers have obviously progressed beyond the beginner's stage. So 
some like to rest on their sit marks. Sugarloaf's wide array of trails make signposts almost imperative. They carry the colorful names from the logging industry, tote road, sluice, crosscut, and narrow gauge. And from the top of number three lift, we can take a fast, spine-tingling run or an easy trip down the mountain as our spirit or ability dictates. The sleuth is a trail strictly for experts, and the lightly dressed girls starting down emphasize Sugarloaf's claim to some of the finest spring skiing found anywhere. The season here is a long one, running from December into May. Out across Carabasset Valley, the Bigelow Mountain Range provides an awe-inspiring backdrop for some of the most beautiful scenery imaginable. To ski the sluice, one must have more than a little skill. This part of the trail is polka dotted with moguls, a run to challenge the prowess of an expert. Our weather is delightful and some top flight skiers on the trail. The right combination for exciting spring skiing on mighty Sugarloaf. So this is skiing in Maine. Excellent snow conditions, well-planned expanding areas, ample facilities for eating, sleeping, and after ski activities, some of the finest scenery found anywhere, and hospitable folks throughout the state to help make your skiing vacation a pleasant one. We hope you enjoyed your quick trip through Maine ski country and cordially invite you to visit us soon. If you like to ski, you'll love skiing in Maine.